So, uh, we're here at ICANN 52, back in Singapore, and for the non-com, it's the mid uh, part of our selection cycle, so we are still very much accepting applications for positions, key leadership positions to ICANN, so we're looking for three people for the board of directors, we're looking for three people for the at-large advisory committee, we're looking for two people for the GNSO council, and we're looking for one person for the CCNSO Council. And the way we work is that we have this application period that's open until mid-March, and then we'll go into our selection period where we, we will lock ourselves away and look at the candidates that we've, we've had and try and shortlist them to try and come up with a suitable slate of candidates at the end of that period. So by the next meeting in Buenos Aires, we'll be locking ourselves away, doing that work, and then the final meeting of the year, the annual general meeting, which is in Dublin this year, we will be ready to announce a new slate of non pharma appointees. One of the exciting things is that uh, this is a very dynamic activity in the non com because you have to look at things very holistically. We can't, uh, and, and one of the beauties of uh, the way this works is that we have uh, we look at this year, the year after, and the following year in terms of how many uh, people will be changing. So we, we try to not just focus on uh, re, you know, finding one person for one seat this year, but also looking at where would that individual fit in a team that as we go through a transition, for example. Very important that we select people that will uh, grow and build the organization. This year, there's an option for candidates to uh, do a, a, a little talking headpiece, a little elevator pitch. Um, a, a little presentation of why they are the ideal person for the job. And we think whilst that's optional, um, that's really important because we are selecting leaders that are front of organisation. And as front of organisation, regardless of where they are, not just the board, but in the councils and the advisory committee as well, um, they need to be able to step up and perform professionally and present as thought leaders right from the get-go. This year we've moved that it is an obligatory item and we then up the game as, uh, as Cheryl said. There's, why would we not expect someone to say in 60 seconds why they feel they're the best candidate for the job? And that will be, a, I think, a, a real helpful uh, tool because if, you, if, you're, if you're reviewing people that you've never met before and no one in the community has had any experience with, um, it's, a, it's a real hit or miss, and we don't want to be hit or miss. We really want to be uh, bringing people forward that will take on leadership roles and grow the institution long after we're here. So let me just say that we're not only looking for people uh, on the board, and I'll let my co-leaders talk to the qualities of the board members, but I want to stress that the NOMCOM is also about recruiting to other bodies, the CCNSO and GNSO Council and the at-large advisory committee. And that's important because people tend to focus on the board and they miss out on what is really a very good opportunity to get into ICANN work, to understand and to build up slowly uh, the experience that then they might be able to put to good use on the board. What's important is, unless an applicant says, even though my first choice is the ALAC, if I can't be appointed to the ALAC, then I guess I wouldn't mind as my second choice being on the CCNSO or on the GNSO or fourth choice on the board. Um, unless they tick those boxes, we can't do the mix and match. So it's really important for candidates and, and more importantly for people who are reaching out to candidates to make clear that if you think, well, if I, if I don't get what my first choice is, I should seriously consider a second and third choice. If you have an individual, whether it's a board member, whether it's an ALAC member, or whether it's a GNSO member, it's the public interest first. Then after we've got public interest, we want to start looking at, uh, if you're looking at the different qualities, if it's a board member, we need to know, they need to have, uh, understand go uh, board governance issues. They need to understand uh, finance, because we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in, the, in ICANN now. When I joined ICANN, we barely had a budget to cover the costs, and today uh, we have hundreds of millions of dollars at stake, so that needs to be carefully managed, and so you need those kinds of qualities. When we come to ALAC, we have to have people who are willing to engage and outreach to the community, because ALAC is the average individual user, and we want to bring these people in. How do they come? They come through the colleagues. 
So um, there's a number of different traits for each one, but I think across the board, if they have public interest first, then they're the people for us, and that's what we're looking for.